As part of the Hispanic History Month celebration, the National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. is highlighting the story of Luisa Moreno. She was a civil rights leader and activist you might not know about, but you should. CBS 17's Alexandra Limon reports on the hidden history of Luisa Moreno. It's a name you probably haven't heard. Blanca Rosa Lopez Rodriguez. She was a labor organizer and a civil rights leader. She fought for Hispanic workers in the United States, beginning in the depths of the Great Depression. But Blanca Rosa Lopez Rodriguez changed her name and called herself Luisa Moreno. Even her name became a way to stand with Hispanic labor. In Spanish, Blanca means white, and Moreno, brown. Her story is the focus of a new exhibit at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Mireya Losa is the curator who oversaw its installation. She's just a figure that predates a lot of work that we think is central to labor organizing. She says Luisa Moreno was born into a wealthy family in Guatemala. She worked as a journalist in Mexico, and she wanted to change the world around her. And she decides in the U.S. that she will rub shoulders with working class and working poor people and really fight for their rights. Moreno moved to New York City where she worked as a seamstress, but the low wages and poor working conditions propelled her to help organize several strikes, and that set her life on a path dedicated to fighting for fair labor practices. And she decides to organize tobacco workers in Florida, pecan shellers in Texas, and cannery workers in California. Moreno became one of the most prominent labor activists of her time after signing on with the American Federation of Labor, in part because of her powerful writings. She is a poet and an intellectual, and she is a clever writer and thinker. Moreno was also key in creating the Spanish-speaking People's Congress, a California-based coalition of Latinos. It was used to lobby Congress for protections for immigrants, like housing and education reforms in the late 1930s and 1940s. But in 1950, the government issued a deportation order for Moreno. They cited her association with the Communist Party as a risk to national security. And she leaves the U.S. Um, because uh, they threaten her with deportation because of a lot of her union organizing and her work. Moreno returned to Mexico, and she lived in communist Cuba. Ultimately, she died in her native Guatemala. I just think her story is really incredible for this period, and I think she's a really incredible Latina. Luisa Moreno helped pave the way for future activists like Cesar Chavez to declare, yes, we can. Si se puede. In Washington, Alexandra Limon, CBS 17 News. And be sure to join CBS 17's Felicia Bolton as we continue to explore Hispanic Heritage Month with our special report. You can watch it Saturday at 1.30 right here on CBS 17.